Mel, 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 where is my jingle? Everybody, I'm Cantonese Cat. Everyone, Cantonese Cat here. Clean Spark, I haven't talked about this for a few days. I want to just give you a quick update here. I did end up posting a lot about Clean Spark on X just a couple of days ago. And there's still a lot of very negative sentiment when it comes to, you know, minor stocks. Um, there's a lot of people who are still extremely frustrated, you know, now that uh, S&P 500 is going to end up having some pretty significant pull down, drop back, NASDAQ looks like it might be rolling over, IWM has been underperforming the major indexes over the month of April because of a hot CPI data, because of, you know, rates just kind of going up like crazy. Like, when miners are just getting hit, like, what's going on? Bitcoin looks like it could also end up having some pretty significant correction. And it wouldn't be surprised anybody, or it wouldn't be the end of, you know, like, out of anybody's imagination if Bitcoin ends up dropping down to, like, the 58Ks. What's going to happen to CleanSpark? Like, what's going to happen to them? The answer is, I don't know, right? All I can say is, if you're frustrated about CleanSpark, frustrated about Mara, um, you frustrated about BitFarm, some of the other Bitcoin miners, and you're thinking, hey, you know, Bitcoin's up, like, why isn't all these coming up? Like, like the liquidity is just not there yet. It's not ready yet. Accumulation is still, you know, relatively happening for a lot of these stocks. And there's just still not ready to run. There's still a lot of supply that ends up, you know, needing to be absorbed. And uh, once they get absorbed, you're going to end up with some pretty craziness, you know, bullishness that's happening. Once IDVM start running, you're going to having a lot of craziness that's just going to happen, you know, happening. But it still hasn't happened yet. It hasn't transpired yet. Could it happen this month? Maybe. So far, it doesn't look like you know, it, it would happen because it looks like the, the wells are still, you know, trying to accumulate. There's still going to be a lot of negative catalyst that's being floating around the traditional financial media. A lot of people are still talking about rates higher for longer and IDVM end up having, you know, some pretty major... Um, sideways correction here so it might put up a lot more negative pressure especially also when bitcoin also could end up correcting down a little bit more right I mean, halving is upon us um, having there's only maybe another week or so before having actually occurs so there's a little bit of a, of a catalyst that's coming a lot of uncertainty here um, and there are a lot of people thinking hey you know post having um, bitcoin might end up dropping down just to kind of flush out some you know additional um, over leverage longs before going up. Um, there are also people that are saying, hey, you know, what's happening happens, you have the overhang kind of over you, um, you're going to end up having, uh, you know, further increase here. So none of this is any guarantee. All I can say is I'm just going to look at the chart of Clean Spark and tell you what I think. And uh, what, what the technicals are doing and how far down it could potentially go before its bullish continuation. This is a monthly chart of Clean Spark. What you're seeing here is that it just keeps on forming these giant cup and handle formation break out above and then back testing it and then go and form another little bit of a cup and handle formation and then back testing it above form another handle like it looks like it's just like a russian doll kind of situation over here this is a cup right here that's a handle right here that's a cup right here the, the world's tiniest handle right there it's another cup right here is forming maybe a little bit of a handle over here too now the handle can go down a lot further um because the top of range is really around like, you know, 12 or 13 or something like that, right? So the handle can actually go down a lot further, but even if it does, I really don't care. I didn't really buy any up here in the 20s. I bought mostly, you know, down here in like the, like really around like 9 or 10. So I don't really care if it goes back down to 12, for, uh, form a little bit of a nice back test and go up. I'll buy more over here and ends up dropping down over here. Does it have to go down that far below? No, because it is back testing some of the other, you know, um, wakes down up up here as well. And there's also, um, you know, some support over here that I can show you. But there, it is, it's not difficult to imagine that it might end up back testing like the 13 and 14 range. Like right now, our price is already at 14. So it's not hard to imagine back testing down to the 13 range either. There were a couple of reasons as to why I say that is. One is if you just pull up the Bollinger Band over here, you can see that price has just got way far above the upper Bollinger Band right now. It's just punishing you for anybody who ended up buying over here about way above the upper Bollinger Band. It's just punishing you right now because the risk level over here is high. If you see the high risk over here, you're suffering from the risk. You know, you end up having, you know, some pretty significant backdrop down here. Right now, the price end up being inside a monthly bullish band, so we did end up having a lot of de-risk that has already happened. Some of the other risk level is really more down here, like around the 12 to 13, 14 range. Um, but 
significant de-risking has already happened. Now, up, on the bull market, the upper Bollinger Band is going to continue to serve as a magnet. And on a bull market, the Bollinger Band is going to end up continue to expand. So you end up having expansion here and there, and you end up having um, a back test over here. Right now, the upper Bollinger Band is around 16.87. So that still could serve as a magnet over the last next like, you know, couple of months or so. I do think that the band's going to expand. I do think that no matter what it's end up doing over the next month or two, it's end up going to you know, push up a lot higher because of the expansion, because it's a bull market, because 20 month moving average is pointing up, there is all indications pointing that the you know, price is going to end up, you know, having a continued bullish continuation because it's a bull trend. Higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, trying to find a higher low. There's no reason to think that the trend is, you know, um, not happening. If you also take out the bull in Japan, if you also look at the RSI, I think it's pretty clear what it's doing. I mean, this, it hasn't really even get heated up yet for a Bitcoin miner. Like this is nothing. It hasn't even hit 70 yet. There's not any like monthly bearish divergences to be worried about. So I'm not really worried about any potential trend exhaustion right now on the greater scheme of things. But right now, it, if anything, it just seems like it's like high volume breakout of the zone, having a little bit of low volume kind of back test here at the zone. Another thing I also want to show you too is why did it end up getting rejected over here? Well, there's a few reasons as to why that is. You pull up some of the Fibonacci levels all the way from the cycle high here to the cycle low. What you're going to end up seeing is, yeah, it got rejected at 0 0.5 Fibonacci level. Completely understandable. How far is it going to end up back testing? Is it going to get a back testing all the way over to here at like 11.43? Not necessarily. I, I'm not, you know, I'm not really that concerned about it going all the way back down. Although if it does, that's fine. Like I'm, I'm not that concerned about it. But instead of looking at Fibonacci level, you look at each mode class, it's going to give you even more of a better picture in terms of what I think is actually happening. It's trying to break inside to each move the cloud here on the monthly. Two big giant green candles trying to push inside. Not able to stay inside the Ichimoku cloud quite just yet. We're in prices all the way up in like 25 here. I was worried that it got way too far, way too fast above the monthly tank in the kitchen. Right now the monthly tank in is at 14.05 and the monthly kitchen is at 13.23. I think these are going to serve as some pretty important support levels here. It did have a bullish cross of the tank in over kitchen right back in February. Even if price break down underneath these, I think this is probably going to end up just leaving a little bit of a wick here before it's bullish continuation through the cloud. And that could happen gradually, that can happen slowly. I don't care. Um, I'm going to let it play out, but I do think that you end up having some pretty decent support levels over here. The bottom, the bottom of the cloud right now is 18.16. Now around like 18 is going to be more of like a magnet, I think. Um, because it does look like price wants to break inside the cloud, even if it got rejected. It's going to try to find some support here, find a higher low before pushing up above the cloud. That's what it's looking to me like it wants to do. And also the top of the uh, upper bullish band is all around 17, and I think it's going to expand to like around 18 or so next month. right? So you end up having a couple of magnets here. You just had a bullish cross over here, so it's going to end up developing some bullish energy to try to push this way above of it. What happened last time when it had a bearish cross? Oh man, we just had a bullish cross over here. Oh boy, All right. So that's the monthly chart of Clean Spark. If you look at the volume shelves from when it first became a miner. It is still finding a lot of support up here at this big giant volume shelf, and as price continues to consolidate sideways, it's going to end up building a volume shelf here. Is it going to drop all the way down to like 11? I don't think so, right? But you end up having some of these like volume shelf support levels down here around like 13 or so. If it ends up dropping down, great. If it doesn't, that's fine too. If you ask me whether or not there's going to be a guarantee that Clean Spark is going to hit 13, I do not think I can guarantee that. Again, it's getting pretty close to some of these very important support levels down here. Could it end up just backtesting it before going up further? 
Maybe. But is the risk enough from price being way far above these kind of important levels to getting really close to it? I actually don't mind if I don't already have a position already. I actually don't mind maybe potentially start DCAing around this level around like 14, 13. I think it's a very good area to seriously consider some DCAing here. And again, none of this is financial advice, but there's a pretty decent bullish setup here, just squeezing between the bottom of the Ichiboku cloud and a fresh bullish cross over here between the Tenkin and Kijin. And on top of that, bullish Japan expansion to be continued to be expected. 20 month move range continued to point up. Right now it just looks like price just got way overextended and it's just correcting a little bit sideways. And you also have a, you know some pretty decent support underneath below here. So I, I that's kind of how I would think about it. Now if you look at the weekly, if you look at the weekly it's getting close to another confluence area, right? And it's getting close to a rising 20 week moving average around 13.5 or so. So that could also be a confluence of support zone over here on the monthly and the weekly. If it ends up dropping down to 13, to me, that's a buy range. If it ends up dropping down to 13, that is a back test of this breakout of this horizontal level over here. Here is resistance, back test is support on declining volume. Basically, volume is also telling you most likely you're going to end up having some bullish continuation here too, right? Increasing volume here on the uptrend, declining volume here on the downtrend, increasing volume here on this uptrend, decreasing volume here on this sideways to downtrend here, hitting some pretty important potential support level down below. Patience may be needed before these bullish continuations would play out, but so far it's looking pretty decent. If you also look at the weekly bull trend, there's no doubt that this is a weekly bull trend. 20, about 50, about 100, all three are pointing up and could it end up back testing the 20 before his bullish continuation around the 13s? Sure, does it have to do that? No. It did that last time, does it have to do that this time? No. Do I care if it does it or not? No, because the trend is positive. All right, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, forming higher low. Pretty clear. I buy trend, I don't buy price. Um, when trend is your friend and trend is up, and when price are getting a little bit closer to some of the key supports here, I look into potentially buying more. The Ichimoku cloud on the weekly is also showing you another nice confluence over here. Around 14, you have the weekly Kijin down here. It could also potentially serve as support. The bull trend is actually extending on the weekly. The tank is actually pointing way up and having nice separation here with Kijin, even though price has been going sideways. This is because we're now starting to average out these candles over here rather than these candles over here. So the Tenkan is going to push up way up. I do think the Tenkan is going to, uh, the weekly Tenkan is going to probably end up serving as a, a magnet to try and push price up higher over, over time. But so far it's looking pretty decent in terms of this price action, even on a weekly. It's way above the Ichimoku cloud and the volumes are also very, very supportive. The weekly trend based on moving averages is also looking very nice. So everything is kind of stacking to um, a very positive outlook here on the longer run. Can price drop down further if Bitcoin end up testing 58k, you know, heaven forbids? Can price drop back down to like the 12 to 13 range? If IWM corrects further, can it do that? Sure. But the volume is also declining here. You're also basically forming a lot of consolidation over here at this range. Even if it goes down further, I think a lot of the bearish energy has already kind of been exhausted. If you look at some of the, and another way to look at too, like why do I say bearish energy was a little bit exhausted? Let's pull up RSI. RSI is showing you that over the last few months when this, you know, bullish move up here was happening, this is happening on a little bit of exhaustion because the RSI is actually declining throughout the entire time. There's a bearish divergence here and guess what? The bearish divergence is playing out. I would argue that it's already played out with this downtrend over here. Could it go down a little bit further to 12, 13? Sure, it can. But I'd argue that this bearish divergence over here is already played out. Guess what is developing right now though? It's developing a lot of bullish divergences. 
like if you look at um, the candle over here, go up here, the price has gone up, right? But if you look at what's happening over here, the RSI actually was like right up around here. <laughs> wow. RSI has completely reset. This is a very nice hidden bullish divergence that you're seeing between price and RSI. RSI has reset, allowing price to go a lot higher. Can it go down a lot further before going up higher? Sure, because price can keep dropping on bullish divergences. Like it doesn't matter, right? But to me, this looks like a very, very nice hidden bullish divergence that's building up. And if you look at not just the RSI, but also look at another indicator, which is the unbalanced volume, it's also telling you a very interesting picture here too. The bearish divergences, you don't really see one here on the on balance volume, but it's been building up some bullish divergences over here, where price just kind of went down over the last month or two. But the buying volume, the unbalanced volume has actually been going up. This is also another like classic bullish divergence over here. There's a lot of bullish energy that's being built up. And I don't care if price ends up dropping down to like 12 or 13. Like, like I can see what the, the whales are doing. I can see what the trend is. And I think that these bullish divergences are going to work out maybe over the next few weeks or so. After the bearish divergence has completely played out, which it might still be ongoing, but I think it's getting close to being done. Because the volume is telling me that this is just a consolidation. Don't worry about it. Anyway, it's been 15, 16 minutes. Thank you so much for listening to me talk about CleanSpark. Have a good weekend. Bye.